Have you heard about Yarn Lane, a TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn, bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools? And find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the programme guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com. Are you a fan of Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? Why not join our growing Facebook fans pages? Just search Sewing Street Fans and Yarn Lane TV Fans on Facebook and click Join Group. It's that simple. Never miss out on the latest news and updates from our presenters and guest designers, special offers and plenty of chat with your fellow fans. Share photos of your makes, ask for advice, interact with your favourite guests and presenters and be a part of the ever-growing sewing and yarn community. See you there! Keep up to date with what's on Sewing Street and Yarn Lane, as well as all the latest news and special offers by signing up to our email newsletters. For Sewing Street, head on over to www.sewingstreet.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, click the envelope and you're done. It's exactly the same for Yarn Lane. Head on over to www.yarnlane.com. Scroll down to the bottom of the homepage, type in your email address, Click the envelope and that's it. You are now subscribed to both Sewing Streets and Yarn Lane's email newsletters. So you'll never miss out on the latest news and special offers ever again. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task. And sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well, our family run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey, so you never miss out. Follow Sewing Street and Yarn Lane on Facebook and Instagram to keep up to date with what's coming up on the show, as well as being the first to know about our amazing offers. Get involved with our competitions that are exclusive to social media. And pick up some top tips from us too. In need of a crafting fix... There are so many ways you can watch Sewing Street and Yarn Lane. Sewing Street is live from 8am to 1pm every day on Freeview 72 and Sky 670. Alternatively, if you want to watch us on a tablet or on the move, you can tune in on our YouTube channel, the Sewing Street app, or the websites at www.sewingstreet.com and www.yarnlane.com. You can watch past shows on Sky 670 from 1pm every day, as well as our YouTube channel, the app, and our website. Yarn Lane is on from 12pm to 1pm. Visit our programme guide to find out when and what's on. So you never have to spend a minute without us. Have you heard about all of the different ways you can shop with Sewing Street and Yarn Lane? You can either shop on our websites, sewingstreet.com and yarnlane.com. You can also order by phone by calling our friendly UK customer service team. For Sewing Street, call 0800 001 4433. And for Yarn Lane, call 0800 4700 600. And don't forget about the Sewing Street app. Here you can shop all of the Sewing Street products as well as watch the live shows from anywhere. You can download the app onto your smartphone or your tablet by simply searching Sewing Street in your app store. And one final thing, no matter how many times you check out on Sewing Street or Yarn Lane in one day, you will only pay one postage and packaging. Happy shopping! Miss the live show? Don't worry, we recorded it for you. Never miss out on your favourite presenters, guests and makes ever again. 
Head on over to our YouTube pages to watch back the day's live show and enjoy your favorite demos over and over again. We also have lots of great content exclusive to our YouTube pages, such as product demonstrations, troubleshooting videos, and so much more. Subscribe and turn on the bell notification so you never miss a show or video ever again. Have you heard about Yarn Lane, a TV show dedicated to knitting, crochet and all things yarn, bringing you demonstrations from our expert guests as well as the latest tools? And find out what's coming up on the show by following us on Facebook and Instagram. Subscribe to our email newsletter or visit the programme guide on our website at www.yarnlane.com. We know that shopping online can be a confusing and sometimes daunting task, and sometimes all you want to do is talk to a human being. Well, our family-run customer service team are on call 24-7. They're full of friendly, warm-hearted individuals, all trained to make your shopping experience as easy and as enjoyable as possible. And not only will they take your order, they will also help and guide you on your shopping journey, so you never miss out. Good afternoon and welcome to Yarn Lane. If you've joined me from Sewing Street, hi. And if you're new to Yarn Lane, it's lovely to see you. I'm Wendy Gardner. I am joined by Vanessa, who has done these lovely things before. It's, um, I'm just admiring her nails, actually. But what we're going to do is we're going to bring to you, these are crocheted toys, but they're crocheted flat toys, which makes them really unusual. Look at these. I'm just going to pick up this one. I just love it. So we're go this is what you're going to get the pattern to make. Now each of these patterns, it's the same pattern with every kit. And the pattern has the instructions to make all five of these really darling little things here. They're perfect for babies and for little toddlers because they're flat and they are the sort of thing that they will dangle from one of the limbs or they will put in their mouths and eat. But actually, you know you get little blankies that they love to cuddle. These, these are perfect for that. So you have stuffing in the head, but and uh, in the little, we call them paws, or do we say hands and toes? Mm, paws. <laughs> yeah, I like paws. Um, so you get. So in this first kit that we're going to do here, let's show the animals. So this is this is cat. Cat. So you get a cat. That monkey. That's the monkey. That's the little monkey. Look at it. He says hello. He says hello. That's the bunky. We also get, oh, I'm going for bunny. So bunny, look how colourful he is, look. Very colourful. Got a little fluffy tail. <laughs> <laughs> then we have an elephant. So these are really cute, aren't they? What's that one? Is that a bunny again? The bunny. We've got That's the bunny, but plain. Um, that's the cat, isn't it? That's and the elephant. Bear. Have you got a teddy? Got a bear. Oh, you, got oh you've got teddies. a bear. You've got one there. Look. So Vanessa. Oh, that's so cute, isn't it? So have we done all five? We have, yeah. That's all five. So all of those are in the instructions. So the instructions are here on the top of my great big pile here. These are crocheted. It's the, um, a free pattern by Patons, which is why the kits that we're going to offer you in a minute are so reasonably priced because the pattern is one that they have produced. And look at this. All of the different little animals you can make. And then there are the variations on them. So they're very simple bodies. I say this, not that I crochet. <laughs> <laughs> very simple bodies. And then you've got the different heads. Aren't they lovely? They're just so fun. Are they quite quick to make as well? 
They are. They, they work up quite quicker than your normal amigurumi animals because you can see the body and the arms and legs. The majority of them is actually made up from the larger stitch because there's no stuffing inside. You're not holding the stuffing in those parts. So you can whip through those bits really quickly. That's handy. So very nice. So that's the pattern you'll get. You get this pattern with every kit. So you can make any one of those, in fact, with what you get. So, so we're going to offer you pairs of natural, pairs of bright, and then the whole lot, natural or bright. This is the big kit of all the brights. So, can, oh, look, I'll just um, flip him round so he's. So there we have little bunny. Now these are just two of the animals that you can make out of the five. So remember that all of those five we showed earlier. And this is what you get in that bundle. So we've got, I mean, look at that. I don't know how many are. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve. Is that right? Is that si have I seriously got the right ones there? <gasps> twelve in the bundle. You could probably make more because some of some of these you only need to use a small amount. For instance, if you're making the rabbit, you need the red, but you only need the red for the extremities and his little tail. So you will have some spare. So you've got all of this for £23.99. So as I said, there's one, two, three, four, five with variegated threads. So you can make these lovely colourful bodies. And then we have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven planes. If I just take those down and then I can show these. I think, I'm wondering if I've got one missing. I think that one should be here, actually. Can we check that? Because otherwise we haven't got that colourway at all. So this is what you look at all this for £23.99. We've got all of these fabulous colours. And they are double knitting, it's called Fab Double Knitting, machine washable at 40 degrees. Does it say 40 degrees? Put my glasses on. You get 12 balls. Um, machine, yes, machine washable at 40 degrees. So that's great if you're making something for a child. You can pop them into the washing machine and you can actually tumble dry on low. So nice and handy to have. So you're getting 12 balls. So you've got five of those and then we have six planes. Five, six. So, oh, I've got, I've got eight planes here now. <laughs> you might not, I don't know which one you don't get. <laughs> uh, anyway, so we have uh, 12 all together, 12 balls all together. You get white and red, candy, must be that one, that's lilac, it's got a shade number, not a name, okay, what's the other one you said? Oh, well, we, uh, you're definitely getting 12 balls and you're definitely getting all these variegated and you're getting lots of the colourful ones so that you can do the extremities to match those. All for £23.99, which is an amazingly good price. I am going to put these down. I'm going to just put them down on the floor behind me um, so that I can then look at the next bundle. So that is all of those. And then we have the natural one. Or the neutral. So you get slightly less balls of yarn this time. I've got six here. So you get eight yarns. And I believe one of the yarns you are getting, which we don't have here, is this one. This natural tweed. 
We don't have that here, but we do have it in the warehouse. We just don't have it here in the studio, but that is in the kit. So we do have that. So this is, that's the natural tweed. You get black. Cream and beige. Chocolate. Camel. Grey and white. So it's the cream I'm probably missing, which is this one here. So that's the other one we've got. So you do, so again, you do get, you get, um, did you say seven? We get seven or eight? Eight. You said we've got eight balls with this one. So eight balls with this one. So you would get all of these plus the cream, plus the natural tweed. That's what you get with this set. But you can make any of these lovely, lovely little flat toys. I just love them, flat toys. Now half the stock of these ones have sold out. So you get the full instructions on how to make them, which is really, I think they're absolutely adorable and I just love, does it tell you how to make the little pom-pom? It does, yeah. It does, so you yeah. <laughs> get the instructions to make your little pom-pom tail. So we've got some demos to do as well, so let's race through these. We're just, oh, whack, whoop, <laughs> losing my arms on the floor. <laughs> Which, which one's monkey? Oh, I'm just looking for which 5H6651. It's this one. So we've got aqua, chocolate, white, beige, and that will be this one. This one. Oh, no, petrol. And the oh, there. petrol. That, maybe that's petrol. So you've then. got the monkey's face on the ah. one there. So, then, so again, you're getting, this is only some of the yarns you're getting, you're getting, is so that six, did you say? Five, you're getting five, but I've only got four here. But you get five, so you get the other one. This is obviously the multicoloured one, but you're getting these in the more plain colours to make monkey in the plainer colours. So you got the brown, oh, brown right, one Oh, that here. one. So um, Vanessa's got that one there. So there's plenty. You won't, you won't be making just one. No, definitely not. You could make a few, few from that. Even can't with the pack, you? you could make. You could probably make four. Yes. With the, with the five balls of yarn. So it's really says so nine ninety nine. All the images are on the website. If if this is getting a bit confusing. Now this one. So this is the rabbit. Nice, lovely, colourful rabbit. MG6642 is the code. So you get three balls of wool with this one. So you get cream, red and clown. So this is the, the multicoloured one. Isn't that cute? So it's the same pattern again. You get, this pa get this lovely pattern and then you get three balls and that's 6 99 you could, but you don't have to make rabbit out of this. No, absolutely not. You can make, because they're all of the different toys are in the pattern. So you can make any one of those patterns that you like. And there's probably enough to make more than one. Definitely. Yeah, yes. definitely more than one, even out of three balls. Then we have this one. Heffalant. Yep. So that code is you... you Three balls of wool again, and of course the pattern which comes with it. Here he is, this little Ellie. Ellie, the oh, I like his little bit on top. <laughs> Can you see that? Is it? So, in this pack, we've got a navy blue rather than this sort of sky blue here. So, you can make him grey, which is, is, is on the pattern here. So, he's grey on his own. We can make him in the multicoloured, and then you've got, the, or you could make him in the blue, but you've got the blue to do the extremities again. 
but there's no reason why you can't do those in the grey and make one in the blue. You choose what you want, how you want to use them to make these lovely creatures. And again, you don't have to make the elephant. If actually you prefer the monkey, but you like this colourway, then get this colourway to work, make the mon monkey. Then we have this one. This one. Okay, so this one is uh, 6650. Okay. So this is another one with three balls of yarn. Oh, they should have four, so it's probably... Ah. Oh. All right, a candy and a fruity. So we get two variegated with this one. Oh, Vanessa's got the finished samples again, if you look at those. So that you can see the two sort of browns make that one. And then you've got the two variegated to make the other. Look at that, isn't it gorgeous? So candy, is candy's that pink, isn't it? That deep pink. Yeah, for the, for the bear's muzzle. So as you, this you can one. see, hardly uses any. Yes, that bit. You so you have got plenty of that. So that's the one you get in there. So you get those four for $8.99. It's a really good deal, I think, all this. Get, so you're getting a lot, money. aren't you, for... This one? 6689. Yeah. It's lovely, isn't it? So that's one of the balls. So that's, that's the one that the warehouse has, but we just don't have a sample of the ball here. So you get four in total again. So you, so you get camel, lilac, natural and breezes, four balls of yarn again, eight ninety nine, including this one. It's really cute, I like this one. It's a cat. Oh well we do have we do have uh, stuffing if um, if you want some stuffing because you do need to stuff the head and the paws and the feet. So it's three ninety nine for this lovely big bag. You won't use all of this. You probably wouldn't even use all of this if you made all five of them, actually. So you'll have plenty left for another time. So it's just £3.99. Um, we also do have... Do you need these? These are stitch markers. They're very useful, Very yes. useful, aren't Absolutely. they? Absolutely. So that was... Less, I know what I'm talking about. <laughs> So the quick locking stitch markers, you've got a nice little set with different colours, ne neatly encased in a little little packet here, which will keep them safe when not in use. So really nice. Also, clover is very well known brand, fourteen ninety nine, and you get 10 small, 10, uh, 20 medium, 6 large in there, depending on what walls you're working with. And then finally, um, the other thing you're going to need is a crochet hook. And we have a four millimeter soft touch crochet hook. Is that what you use? It four is, millimeter. Yes. So you do need that as well. That's four ninety nine. You might already have one, but if you haven't, if you're thinking about starting crochet, is this one you could use a beginner project? Oh, definitely. Four yep. millimeter. So if you're really thinking of size. starting, maybe I should get one. <laughs> Make one of these <laughs> little things. So let's go over to your demo. Oh, wow, I I absolutely adore these toys. I think you are saying about them being uh, really good for little babies and small children because they are so soft and squishy. It's a lovely acrylic yarn um, and it means you can wash it and wash it. They can drag it through the mud and uh, it's just going to be able to be through the washing machine and back with them straight away or make a second so that they <laughs> <laughs> so you can swap them in and out when they well, get, when they when they get go, a bit dirty. They can't go to sleep without it. No, definitely not. They've got to, they're going to be in love with them. But I, the thing I love about them is, as you said, their bodies are all exactly the same. The he basic head is exactly the same, the arms and the legs. So you could make a whole set in every colour or before you even decided which one you wanted to make into which animal. If you decided to go off piece and you love that red and red and yellow and green one but need to have it in the bear you could just switch it out and do the and follow the pattern because until you get to the features and the tails that's absolutely all exactly the same it's good isn't and it? because because these bits of the soft bits that don't have any stuffing in are made up in the treble crochet you can whiz through those really easily and um, it's only made of two stitches you've got the double crochet for the smaller parts where you do have a little bit of stuffing and the head and then the rest of it's treble, so it's really nice and simple. So just master two stitches? Just two stitches. Do you need to ha know how to chain? 
You do know how to chain at the beginning, but only at the very bottom of the body. One, one lot of chains. So I was going to start with the, with the bottom of the body and show how to do a treble and how to do the decrease that goes up the side as it's reducing number of stitches on each side to get that shape and then when you stop at the top. And do you sew those two body pieces together? No, it's all one continuous piece. So you're sort of working in a big spiral. You start with it's 60 stitches at the bottom that you join together and then you work upwards in a loop. You're just working around. Just going straight up, decreasing across the sideways and then you end up with this sort of triangular shape. And then at the end, you sew all the, the arms and the legs and the head on and they're <coughs> going to be super stable. No one's going to be pulling them off. And I love the fact that the features are embroidered as well. You don't have to worry about any little plasticky bits coming off in small hands and mouths. Perfect, yes. So they are absolutely beautiful and I love, I love all the colours of them. My children, when I made versions at home, have absolutely gone balmy for them. Oh, they're five and seven, so... Oh, they're all quite five yeah. and seven. <laughs> they're not, they're they're not, not sucking babies. their thumbs and carrying them round. <laughs> Well, so it just goes to show they're for all ages absolutely. then, doesn't it? So when you say you embroidered the facial features, mm -hmm. is that with the wool or did you use embroidery floss? Um, I used some of the black yarn that was in the Naturals pack, but you could use, you could use embroidery so you, so you floss. Can you can do that, use or you could use embroidery floss. Whatever you've got. Yeah. It's, uh, you don't need an awful lot of it at all. It's just um, yeah, whatever you've got lying around you can find. <laughs> um, so I was just going to start with a very basic um, slip knot and chains just to show people in the beginning. Um, if you've not done a slip knot before, the easiest thing to do is to wrap your yarn around your fingers, grab your hook and go underneath, pull that piece through and pull the tail and you've got your knot that you can move up and down. When you're starting with a starting chain in crochet, it's always better to be as loose as you can be with these chains because you've got to work your stitches back into them and if you try and hold everything really, really tightly, you might struggle to put the stitches in. The other trick is to, rather than using your four millimetre hook for this chain, you could always go up half a size or a size. That'll make sure that even if you're crocheting tightly, the uh, chains are going to be a bit bigger. So it calls for a 60 chain to begin with, but I won't, won't bore you with a whole 60 chains. So to do a, a basic chain, you're just going to put your yarn over your hook, pull it through that hole, and you've made your first chain. It's that simple. So you just keep grabbing and pulling through. And if you're worried about what you've done, if you look at it, you can see this little V-shape. That's your chain that you've made. That's the front and the back loops of your chain. So you would go along and you carry on doing that until you've got 60 of them. You can have a big, long rope-like piece at that point. And the biggest thing you want to check is that you don't end up twisting it round because otherwise you're never going to be able to work your stitches into it and have them looking all go, they'll all be going in opposite directions to each other. So when you get to the end of your 60 and it tells you in the instructions to slip stitch back to the very first stitch. So you're just going to make sure that it's flat the whole way along, your V's are all pointing the same direction and you'll just turn it round on itself, find that very first V that you made and put your hook through both the front and the back of that V, grabbing your yarn and pull it through the V and also the stitch on your hook and there you've got your, so this will be much bigger but you'll be working around it. So you're going, it will tell you to do two chains which will take you up to the height of your treble and then you're going to treble all the way around. And to do a treble you're going to yarn over and insert into that first stitch through the front and the back, grab your yarn and pull it through. So you're going to have one, two, three loops, yarn over through the first two, yarn over through the second two, and that's your treble stitch made. So you're going to follow your circle all the way around, doing exactly the same, yarning over, going in, yarn over, pull up, pull through two, pull through two. By the time you have worked your way around that, you will have... Here's one I, did here's one I made earlier. <laughs> I like a blue Peter. So this is the um, blue from the monkey kit. This lovely variegated blue. So I've done my chain of 60, which I linked together. And then I've done one whole row of trebles. And then I've chained up and I've started again with the next row. I was going to show you the decreases that you need to do on the side to get that triangular shape. 
So with a treble crochet, all you're doing to decrease is you're taking the two stitches from the row below and rather than doing a stitch in each of them, you're going to link that stitch across. So you're going to do half of a treble. So you're going to yarn over into the top of that stitch, pull through to your three loops, yarn over, pull through the two. And normally you would do that again and finish the stitch, but instead you're going to skip to the next. Yarn over again and pull one up. Yarn over and pull through two. And now you're going to yarn over and pull through all three. So it's taken those two stitches underneath and turned it into one stitch on the top. And it tells you, there's line by line instructions in the pattern. It gives you the number of stitches that you're expected to have in each um, row. Right, it's so got so a row count. So do you put one of your stitch markers in at the beginning at of the, the row? At the beginning so of the row, yes. Yeah, so I would, it's, in the treble rows, it's actually not that bad because it's very, very distinct. When you've chained up, you can see yeah, it's exactly where the start of the round is. But when we, I'll show some of the bits when we're working in the double crochet, which is much smaller stitch. And because you're going around in a spiral, it's really easy to lose where you started. And then you're suddenly thinking, am I halfway through a row? Am I at the beginning of a row? So um, that's where the stitch markers become absolutely invaluable so that you can just mark the beginning of the row and let you know. But it'll tell you that you've got to do, uh, for example, on these rows, 29 stitches, then a decrease and then 29 stitches and then it's the end of the row before you move on to the next one. So although it looks like an awful lot, when you pick up that leaflet the first time around, you just flick through it and you might be like, there's so much going on in there. But you, it's line by line, piece by piece, every single instruction that you're going to need. So it's really useful. It's so a really lovely nice written easy. pattern. Yeah, it, it, if you haven't ever crocheted before, you've got your hook, got your stuffing, got your yarn, you'll be able to just sit, even if you have to come back and watch any of this or yes because of course we can watch this again yeah so this will be on YouTube yeah um, but half of the kits have already gone particularly the brights are very popular the big the big bright one so, so do bear that in mind in if you're kit. interested because obviously once we're out of them we're out of them so I think uh, I, I reckon in that kit obviously you've got everything for the brights but you'd be able to make well over half again if not more if not all ten because there's just they, they don't take huge amounts of yarn, it's only having the, the little details that make it different. And if you've got odds and ends at home as well, if you make some, you could always add in other colours. Yes, true. For the details as well to make it a little bit more different and personalise them. But you could have you could have a menagerie in a nursery for a little one. They could have a bit of everything hanging. They could, couldn't they? Wouldn't it be a little cot full of <laughs> all the animals. <laughs> at least it, that would solve that problem with I can't go to sleep without that particular one. <laughs> Just, yeah, pick them all. <laughs> So the bodies are all the same. So once you've learned how to do the bodies and the paws, yep. So you can just make those again and again. And even the head, you said, is the same. Yes, the head's exactly the same on them all. So e even on rabbit, because yes. is that just where you've put the it eyes in? Dimp you've just dimpled it with the. It's a, in the instructions. It says when you do the rabbit's eyes after you've finished embroidering the shape of them, if you just give it a little tug before you knot it off, and then and knot it hard behind once you've tugged it, it uh, pulls that little. It looks, the, the elephant's um, got a little bit of shaping on his face as well, but it's all done just with the way that you embroidered the eyes in afterwards. It looks like trickery done with loads of different decreases just in those little pieces, but it's not. Yeah. So every single one of those heads starts out as just a perfectly circular ball. And, uh, and then you just make the expressions. You just work from there. It's so cute. It's very clever, isn't it? It is. And that's what makes it such a nice pattern to start with if you've never tackled anything like this before, because they are so simple and you're gonna the, the confidence that you'll get once you've done one of them you'll be yes. off oh i'm quite tempted <laughs> <laughs> so i know the the nep is the one that you haven't got the actual balls off but the i, I love working with yarns with nepping i think it gives it yes it's beautiful lovely it? effect and so this, they are in the kits it's just we don't have them here so that your body's going to end up completely like this you were saying about it being two sides but it yeah, is just, just one. one long piece and you um sew the top up once you're, once you're finished, you can either, I was going to show this because you could, there's two ways that you can do it. So I'm just going to go across and join this with a slip stitch here. And you can either knot that off now and then thread your yarn onto a needle and just go back and forwards and sew it through. Or you could slip stitch the whole way across and actually just carry on using your crochet hook to finish it off. Right. So I was going to show... So you don't, you don't stuff the head inside it then? No. Nope. Okay. No, you can just, um, if you 
keep a long tail, I've done, as I've done at the top and the bottom here, and all, all of your pieces, then you've got that yarn when you're done to then go back and sew it into. And you can just uh, thread it onto a darning needle and just sew it in really tight. And it just, they don't come off because they're nice and tight in there. It's, I just think they're so gorgeous. So we've got less than 20 bundles of the Bright Bundle now. And that gives you everything you need to make at least five of the animals. But as um, Vanessa's just saying, probably 10, uh, up to 10 of them. Because as, you, as she was just saying, you, you know, you, can you don't have to do the colourways as we've done them no. here, do you? You can choose and mix and match those. And if you've got little remnants at home of different colours, you can use those for your paws and your ears. Price per toy works out to less than five pound. And that's, and that's just making five, so if you're making ten, yeah, definitely, under 250 a toy if you make ten. I think they're gorgeous, they're great for all sorts of ages really, aren't they? So when do so you crochet? I tend to crochet in the evenings, uh, once the kids have gone to bed and given me a bit of peace and quiet. I just, I really like, uh, it's so easy to spend your evening sort of wasted on social media or watching things on Netflix that not, you not really necessarily that interested watch. in. Yeah, so it's quite <laughs> I nice to... I can't wait for Blow Dex Mediterranean to come back. Absolute <gasps> car crash TV. <laughs> rubbish. Absolute I've rubbish. heard some really good <laughs> things really about that. It. It's really good fun. <laughs> <laughs> I haven't actually watched it yet, but it's on the you list. You really don't want to. <laughs> <laughs> don't get into it. But I, I do like getting to the end of the evening and looking down and thinking, oh, I, I did a bit of something productive. Yes, and, it, and you, I mean, I like sewing because I find it very therapeutic. Yeah. Presumably you feel the same. Definitely. It's, it's, it's quite a mindful thing to be able to do to actually just pick something up and get a bit lost in the pattern and yes and yeah I really I absolutely love it it's um become way more than just a hobby it's just a lovely lovely peace of mind for me yes I think that's that's what's so important all crafting is mm. mindful really isn't it I didn't I, I wasn't it. expecting to, to for it to be as enjoyable when I took it up as a hobby I just thought it would be something fun to try and uh, yeah it's definitely I should have to try it I keep saying I will I haven't yet done so. I will. I will. I promise. I will. <laughs> uh, I, was, I was going to show slip stitching across this top okay. just as, a, as another option instead of stowing it. So you'd take your yarn through the stitches on both sides, both pieces, front and back. Go through both. Grab your yarn, pull it through, and then pull it through the one on the loop. And that's literally just close the whole thing off. So you'd go across doing the same. Okay. So and can you just bring it slightly to your right? I can. That's See, I told you I was going to drift. keep creeping over. <laughs> um, so and then so you're going go through, through both. both the loops on the front stitch and both the loops on the back stitch. So you've then got, it looks like, four pieces on your hook. Grab your yarn, tug it under all of them, and then through the piece that's already on your So you hook. always end up with just one. So you just end up the with the one, and then you move that's on to the nice next pair. Right. So if you could do it by hand sewing needle or a yarn needle. Yeah. Or you can do it Or you can do it this it. way. But if you've already got your hook and you're, you know, you've got a loop on your hook already, might you as might well. as well just carry on across the top like this. And then you end up with a nice seamless join across the top for that. And that's your body. And that's your body done. So I have got some pieces over here of, I was going to show the, the head, half a head. <laughs> so all of the arms and the legs and the head are all worked in the round so you start off with just one stitch that you stitch into and then you increase in a spiral going outwards and then you'll do the same number of stitches for a certain number of rows which it tells you in the pattern and then you start to decrease down to bring the bring it back in again and at this it does tell you very clearly in the pattern it's quite easy to get carried away when you're decreasing stop <laughs> put your stuffing in <laughs> <laughs> so that you don't end up with a tiny little hole. You yeah. desperately try to poke the stuffing in. Um, so yes, it, it's, it doesn't let you get away with that in this one. And you can also embroider the features on at this point as well if you don't fancy working through the stuffing. It's um, sometimes easier if you want to. And the really large, pi large pictures on the pattern so you can use those for reference. Yes. Um, looking at where they, where they need to be. This is for your eyes and things. Yes, for the eyes and the nose. Um, and some of them have the features embroidered directly onto the, like the monkey has his mouth and his nose on the muzzle piece. So you can do that separately before you stitch it on. Um, so I was going to show how to do double crochet, 
which is for the smaller stitch, and then an increase and a decrease, which is what you need to make yeah. these round pieces. Uh, so I'll do an increase on this piece, and then I'll do a decrease. I was going to say, do you put the eyes on before you stuff? I do. I personally do. But what about when you have to pull them in for the rabbit? Um, I left a long tail, and I left it hanging out the bottom. Okay. Um, and then I, I pulled it at this point and pulled it in and then did a knot behind it before I carried on because um, I figured it might be quite difficult to try and get that knot in the right place to hold that dimple yes. in if I did it after it was stuffed. Um, but I, it, it says you can do either in the pattern, so okay. it's, it's purely how you feel comfortable. I also find it's easier to, when it's really taut, quite difficult with the stuffing to get the needle back out again, so I try and do it before I've stuffed it. Um, so with a double crochet, it's the smallest stitch that you can do and it's really common in crochet toys because that's the, the stitch that people use because it holds stuffing in and most crochet toys you have stuffing through the entire animal so it's always these really small stitches um, so when you're doing a double crochet you put your yarn the hook sorry through the top two V's of the stitch yarn over and pull through once and then yarn over again and pull through both and that's it that's your double crochet done so, mo so you're just going to be following the pattern along it might say do three double crochets and then do an increase so if you're doing an increase you need to as we did a, a decrease in the trebles earlier we were pulling two stitches together now at an increase we're going to put two stitches in one to make an increase so it's exactly the same thing you're just going to put two inside that V rather than one so you're going to push in yarn over and pull through and then yarn over again and then straight under the same stitch yarning over so you've got two loops yarning over and now I don't know if you can see there's two stitches there and you've mm. made two on the top so and then it, you would do your three normal double crochets or whatever it's called for on that particular row and then you'd increase again so you'd go in through the two yarn over and pull up yarn over pull through and then straight into the same stitch do the same again and you've made your increase so it will be the, this it's always the same set of stitches for you're a circle. Are you decreasing? I'm no, increasing. I'm you're adding extra you're stitches making in. An extra stitch so in I'm this. going I'm coming at the moment this piece is the beginning here, so I'm coming and making it wider for whatever this was going to be. I think it was a foot. Um, and then with the decreases, I can do it on the same piece actually. It will be the same thing. You might need to do three normal double crochets and then it will tell you that it's time to decrease and you're going to do the same as you did with the treble you're going to take two stitches in the row below just join them into one and it's really easy with a double because you just go in through the stitch yarn over pull up and then you go to the next stitch do exactly the same hook in yarn over pull up and then through all of those and you've taken those two stitches and just created one v on the top for the next the next line uh, i'll do one more so I'll do another couple to separate them. One, two. Oh, um, Jane has said, my doggies would love these, especially if you put a squeaker in too. Oh, my goodness, you could, they couldn't would, you? wouldn't they? My dog loves a bit. Quite a lot of his toys are flat toys, and they've got a squeak in the head. Yes. Um, he's got a dragon that he goes barmy for. That would that would work really well, actually. You'd probably they would, but you must supervise if yes. you give a, a, a pet Just a in toy. case. Just in case, because they could actually bite and... Get choked There's on much the more chance of them ripping, <laughs> ripping them up. <laughs> That's such I a bought a natural set and can't wait to get started. This channel is getting to be addictive. Thank you, Nicole. Sorry about that. Sort of. <laughs> <laughs> Keep adding them in. <laughs> I bought this kit last time it was on and love it. Does the dream go up and the back? Sorry. Does the dream go up the back? Because I ended up seam. with the decrease just down one side. Ah, the yes, seam. that's a seam. Okay. Uh, it, no, it should go up the sides. So um, you are, where's that bigger piece that I started? So you're on, sorry, I've got so many little pieces now. Um, so your piece is like this when you're starting. So I've decreased here on this side. And then when you get to the other side, I'm just going to skip over so that I don't have to do all of those trebles. Um, it, it, it says on the instructions, when you get to the other side, you actually skip the chain when you move on to the next. So you, instead of doing a physical decrease like you have done on this side, you're just skipping a stitch from the row below when it comes to the second side, and that makes your decrease for you on that side. Right. So it ends up pulling it in 
on so it pulls it in evenly both, on both sides yeah exactly the same so you'll end up with the same decrease either side and then when they lay flat um because if you did it that way you'd end up with a sort of yes pointy edge and it wouldn't sit quite flat so yes it's definitely um, on each side thank you That's we've okay. put the graphics up for the natural animal flat toy kit We've only got 15 of these left. It's 19.99, and this is the one that you get. What, how many balls of wool was this one? I think it was Six. eight or something, wasn't it? Eight. eight balls of wool was that one. So it's 19.99 for eight balls of wool, and you can make all of those with that. Aren't they cute? Look at them all hugging together, not socially distanced. <laughs> I hope they're jabbed. <laughs> they're double jabbed. They're double jabbed. We're double fine. Jabbed. Double jabbed. <laughs> um, and something else I was going to show, which I actually I didn't get time to do on the last show, was um, changing colour. Oh because yes. Because you do need to change colour in um, the arms and legs of the bright guys. So I've got a foot or What's a hand, a I suppose, a foot or a hand, a paw um, that I've made in one of the one of those colours, and I was just going to show adding in adding in the other colour. So I've got to the end of the row, it's something that you'd see once you started getting the pattern going. You've, so I've done the double crochets all along and then you chain one at the end of a row and you'd normally carry, you'd go into the next stitch and just carry on double crochets but this is the point that we stop and we change to a treble. So to change the colour I'm going to start a stitch and instead of grabbing this colour and pulling this through I'm going to just drop that there grab the next colour and pull that through instead and so when I pull tight on the blue I can start my next row and I can pull those back in in a second so you you'd chain two and then you'd start your trebles for the legs so yarn over into the stitch yarn over pull through one and two and you just carry on doing the trebles the whole way around for the amount of rows that they've asked for either, I think it's six or seven for the legs and about 12 for the arms. But if you, now that's all tightly in, you can just go back in here, give the pieces a little tug so they're nice and tight and you can either knot them and tuck them inside or weave them in with a darning needle if you wanted to make sure that they're never gonna come undone. And once you've done a couple of rows of the trebles, you could stop and then put the little stuffing bits inside your foot. Oh yes, yeah, so you don't try and so stuff So you're not trying to leg. stuff again yes. the whole thing once you've finished it, feeling all proud and then think, oh, I've got to Let's stuff it now. That in Although there, if yeah. you do, the end of a crochet hook is really good for poking right down into the little bits that you can't reach. <laughs> <laughs> Found that out too many times. <laughs> but it's, yeah, changing colour in... Uh, That's very easy, it's, isn't it's it? It's such a simple... And it gives you quite a, quite a flawless colour change as well. When you come round to it, you're not... You, it just... There's no yes. half a stitch in one colour and half a stitch in another. When I first learned to change colour, I did it a completely different way and I could always find it and it always stood out like a sore thumb, yeah, but, but this, this way, way it doesn't. So I might, shall I show it again? Would that be easy? That's or? probably a good idea, yes. I'd do some times. I need to show, be shown things more than once. <laughs> so you would just start your stitch as, as if you were going to carry on with that colour. I, I don't know why, but I always find it helps holding the other tail, even though I'm not going to complete it with that. So instead of yarning over this colour, I'm just going to pull that one through and then oh, pull it through there again and just start my chains to get me up to the height of the trebles and then carry on with my trebles. That's really clear. So it's nice and simple. You've got about 10 minutes left. Oh my goodness. I know, doesn't time fly? So have you got any other demos you wanted to t show us? Uh, no, I was, gonna, I was going to get, I've got all of the little um, facial features. I've made a little, uh, one of each of those and I was just going to show all the different pieces. And could you, could you show us how to pull in the eyes? Because I think that's, that's possibly one of the more complicated ones. I haven't got any embroidery yarn with me. Does it matter if you just use... No, I mean, I just, I... I just to show how it's done really I'm thinking yeah I didn't I haven't got a darning needle or I haven't oh, got any so you of need those a bits darning no. needle. well okay. just just to thread the thread the black onto to go in and out you can't you can't uh, do the features with your crochet hook right. you do have to sew those so you need on. a darning needle with a nice yeah. big eye and do you go sort of through that way 
I start, start at the back with, with a nice knot so that it's not coming through any of the okay. stitches and then come in and out, make the eye shape. Make just so one you can eye just shape. go you can go either side of a stitch. I tend to yes. find going around an entire one of the stitches on the head is a good size for the eyes. And then once once I'd finished, I pulled it through and held it really tight. And then whilst it was on there tight, made a, another big knot at the back to pull that in and hold it in. Right. Um, but it, it sort and of... And then do the other eye. And then I pulled across and did the other eye as well from the same piece. So I, you, can do, you can do it with one continuous piece. If, yes. Just don't pull it tight between... Once you finish the eyes, don't then carry on pulling it tight when you're doing the nose, otherwise you'll end up with a nose really sunk in as nose. well. <laughs> with, like, squiffy eyes. But it's nice having having them in the rows, it is nice that you can use your stitches as a guide so yes. you don't end up with slightly wonky looking. Think slightly wonky <laughs> eyes. Although it's all, yeah, it's all shows that it's handmade, doesn't it, when there's the personalisation to it. I think they're really, really beautiful. I love the, um, just how, how simple it can be with the Teddy's ears, for example. Um, that is just, it's exactly the same as the hands and the feet, but instead of it staying round like this, you just you fold it flat and make the shaping oh. and then sew it on. So have you got, got any teddies, teddies over there? Oh no, I've got teddies here, haven't I? So if I pop yes. them down here, so it's it, is, the same, it is exactly it's the same, the same as, a as a hand and a foot, but you just tuck it on itself and sew it on like that to get the the lovely shaping of it. And with the teddy as well, you make you make his muzzle and then you so is little, it's actually a, that's not embroidery, that's actually a little crochet, co crochet piece. Oh, it's is only it? about six stitches. And so you sew that on, then a bit of stuffing under his muzzle, and then that gets sewn on as well. So he's got a nice, really squishy little face. I think he's beautiful. He's one of my favourites, the teddies. Oh, he, yes, they are. They, I, love, I love your brown monkey yes. as well. And the monkey's tail is yes. actually quite, quite clever, because I, I presumed that it was going to be shaping. Uh, with stitches, but it's actually one long piece. I've got one here. Excuse the rustling on my bag. Um, when you make it, it's actually one long piece, and you it tells you in the pattern to make sure you leave a nice long tail. So if I pull him in here, and you actually thread this back up inside, and then you once it's up and inside, you give it a tug, and it turns it round, and then you fix it inside and actually makes that, makes shape, that shape just through and so it's not not complicated at all they've made a really simple solution to give a beautiful shape on them all but i think the bunny's tail the little pom-pom it's got yes, to be the pom -pom. it's a winner for me everybody it's a, a beautiful pom-pom too -pom. so you've done very well very well <laughs> <laughs> yes i shouldn't be playing around with his bottom should i <laughs> very cute Look at that. Oh. So does it, it tells you how to make the pom-pom? Yes, yeah, it's got the instructions yeah. for the pom-pom. Um, I, I did cheat. I've got one of those little pom-pom machines that I wrap the, the yarn around. Yes. But you can use a, a piece of cardboard. Yeah, There's a million tools. That's how we used to do it. Yeah, absolutely. When and I was a kid, I used to make them. And then you get all these tools them. now. We used to know, do it with just bits of cardboard, didn't yeah, we? Yeah, with the slot in it. Yes. And yeah. Wrap it round and round and round. <laughs> It's just as easy, all these lovely tools. So we've got less than five minutes left, so let's just have a quick recap of some of these beautiful kits. Um, you can make all of these gorgeous little animals. These are flat toys, um, which makes that they're really fun and they're really easy to carry around. I mean, you just know that little ones are going to be carrying it by just one limb or other, or the tail or whatever. That's what my sons used to do with theirs. My I used to have a, had a Pikachu. A thumb and a, and a toy <laughs> by a tail when I was wandering around. <laughs> I think I made my teeth buck teeth because I used to suck finger and thumb. Not just thumb, finger and thumb. <laughs> but anyway, so you can make all of these um, from these patterns. And it's the same pattern each time. So if I just grab the pattern to show you. So every time with the different kits, you get this lovely pattern. So this pattern makes all five of these lovely little creatures. So you have here, we have got an elephant, a teddy, a cat, a rabbit, a monkey, and what else did I miss? Bunny. Bunny. Bunny, yes, of course, with stuff you tell. And you can decide on the combination. So we've put together yarn packs for you, and you can buy the yarn packs, and we're sort of saying, oh, this is the one for make the elephant, but make whatever you like. 
So the neutral pack, which you can make all five of these lovely little critters, um, we've only we've got less than ten of those left. So that is what what's the price of that one, the neutral one? Nineteen ninety nine for that one, and you can make all of those. And as Vanessa was saying, you can you can actually use the yarn to do the facial features, and then you just need the stuff into stuff. So that's what you need to stuff. We also have the brights. Now the brights we have. 12, wasn't it 12 balls? We were just losing track of how many be all those balls of wool you got. Yes, you got all of those balls of wool, all these different colours to make. I've got them all down here. I'll see if I can pick them up. Now we are coming up to single figures on this one. Look at these. Look at these. So all of these is what you're getting. So a lovely bundle there with the pattern, of course. So you're getting that pattern yet again. And all of these lovely colours. You've got the variegated colours so you can make the colourful ones. And you've got all of these other pretty colours which you're just using for the paws and the facial features and the and tails and things like that. So you're getting all of that for $23.99. Oh, Christine's got a good... I haven't got Facebook so I can't see. Oh, Christine says she knows they're flat. Oh, but you could easily make them into hot water bottle covers. You could, because you could put poppers in the bottom. You might have to resize that the body to yeah. fit a hot bottle. You can get little hot water bottles, you can't get you? get the ones that you use for your hand, can't yes. you? Like the go that you take out golfing or something like yes, that. Yes, you, you could. You could slip that inside. in, just put poppers on. Oh, it'll be lovely on your back. <laughs> unless, he's got, unless you've got the bunny, because the bunny on your back might be... Oh, with the pom-pom. His little pom-pom <laughs> might stick in. Oh, can you, uh, yeah, can you, have you got a spacer? Can you show how you put one of these spacers on? Uh, yes. Have, the, have you I don't have one? any of your, I only got the ones that I've brought from home. Sure. But, um, Here we are. So, <laughs> just clunk as they go over. <laughs> it's got a nice hard plastic case to keep them yeah. in. And they're all divided into Otherwise, their little colours. You, you end up putting them in the bottom of your um, little case that you keep your hooks and stuff in. You're forever ferreting yes, around. So, find them. these cases like are brilliant. Drawing, um, paper clips. They get caught up with each other too. So, for example, if I'd if I'd got to this point and I wanted to put it down and pop it in my bag and, and go off, you literally just put it through the loop that was on your hook and tuck it in. And that's it. It's done. And then oh, that's not so going to unravel. At so it's all. not just So you don't just use them for marking. Them. You no, can use them to hold They them. are so so useful for marking your stitches but for also leaving your work. We, I always worry about it all untangling. So you oh, can yeah, do that at the end. I notice you just keep taking them okay. out for the next piece. <laughs> yeah, if I, if, sure I, if, I, if I didn't untangled. have them, if I didn't have them in the pieces that I put down, and they got caught in something as I pulled them out of the bag, do, 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 <laughs> stitches would be gone. <laughs> but you could also, so they go on that side. They're just a little flick, and out they come. She says I got caught on my nail. So if I was, I threw my hook on the floor. Sorry, I'm back again. Um, if I was getting to the first stitch, for example. So I'm. this is, say, my last stitch of a round, and then I want to mark the first stitch. I would um, put it through the V that I'd made. Yes. In that stitch there, just across the two of them like that, and lock it in. And then when I got all the way around the next time, when I went to go and crochet into that stitch, I would know that that had been that was your first that stitch. That was my first stitch, and I'm not going to then end up Being just massively carrying on. So I would get all the way around, <gasps> oh. and I would know that that stitch is my first stitch, and I can just move it up, take it out of that stitch, stitch into it, and move it up to the next so one. So you can keep moving it. Just keep Thank moving you. it. Okay, we've got only one minute left on the show. So we've got all these different kits. So you've got the neutrals, or the naturals, and then you've got the colour brights, and then we've got the other smaller kits. So do have a look at yarnline.com so you can see all the variants of the kit. So of course you can actually go on and if you watch live and then you can kind of like order them from the website there. Um, you can, they, yes, they range from $6.99 for three balls and the patterns included up to $23.99 for the mega pack of 12. Um, you can watch it later on YouTube as well. Um, but let's look at the menu. Uh, for, oh, there's no, we haven't got a menu because we're not on tomorrow, are we? No, no we're on the other night, so we're not. Okay, so it's uh, lovely to have seen you. I hope, I'm not sure when, who's, who's doing Yarn Lane next, but join whoever it is for the next one. 
um, it's, I think it's Bex on Monday. So until then, have a lovely weekend. Thank you.